Hi, my name is Paul Platts. I came from a, a large hardwood lumber distribution yard and we used to import a lot of mahogany there. And um, worked for PRS now for three years. We're going to look at uh, what we use for uh, next stock. This is our, this is a typical board of uh, 12 core mahogany from Peru. And it's, uh, this board, this particular board has 134 feet in it. A lot of people say to me, why would you take such a big, beautiful board and make necks out of it? But uh, it just so happens that the best wood is in the biggest boards and the biggest logs. This came from a supplier who is FFC certified and uh, practices sustainable uh, forestry management. And uh, it just so happens that uh, a mahogany tree once it becomes 70, 80 years old, um, it becomes mature and it starts to hollow out in the middle. And so they, uh, that's the time for them to be harvested. To get boards like this, to get, um, let's say, one pack of lumber to make necks, we'll have to go through two or three truckloads to get one pack. The, uh, the grade works for us. And you can just tell by handling them the beautiful sound that comes out of these necks. The grain is tight, the, the mahogany is very dark. And I'd say to get a board like that, it's like one out of every 50 boards, maybe. It's dark enough, dense enough, grain straight enough to become a neck for PRS guitars. Great sound. If, we, if you use a smaller log to get the neck, uh, it'll have tension, an adolescent log, and the neck will, will, will move, twist on you, and it just won't be as good. Uh, one of the things we look for in neck stock, one of the primary things, is that the lumber has to be what they call flat cut or slab cut. That's, um, if you're looking at a log, the, the grain goes like this. The best boards are when the log is big and the grain goes straight across the board. That's ideal. That's called flat cut. Also, we look on the edge of the board to make sure that the uh, lumber is, or the, the grain is straight this way, not going up and down or anything like that. Because if the grain moves this way in a board, the neck will move with the grain eventually. The best necks are perfectly straight this way. And as you can see in the, in the product here, once it's cut, this grain is very, very straight. This particular neck here is a very good quality neck. As you can see, uh, it's very, this is the quartered side of the neck where the fretboard gets glued on. It's very stable. Very good quality neck. Hello everybody, it's Paul, and we're in one of our neck drying rooms. If you could imagine that getting all the water out of a piece of wood and getting all the resins to crystallize might make the guitar sound better, then you're understanding why we've built these sophisticated drying rooms for the necks, for the fretboards, for the bodies, for the tops, for everything. Right now we're in the neck room and I've got a big load of curly maple neck blanks um, here that I'm leaning on used to be that the drying room was this small, but we kept guitars in here, all the wood, everything, but the business has grown to the point where we have a lot of these sophisticated rooms that have a little bit different um, temperatures and humidity in them for what we want to do to each kind of wood. Right? Um, as well, uh, the original oven for baking the fretboards is in here, and now we're starting to use even more sophisticated ovens for doing that. In the end, you want the guitar to ring. If it's full of water, it'd be like a wet sponge. It's just going to go thud. If the resins are not crystallized, it's like the wood's full of oil. It's going to go thud. But if the resins are crystallized and the water's all out, you have a chance of having an extraordinary musical instrument without waiting half a century for it to dry out. So that's why we're here. We're in one of our sophisticated neck drying rooms. Uh, 
the raw wood to make it sound good. You know, if I take a neck blank from right over here, just one just sitting there, it almost sounds like a musical instrument just in this raw piece of wood, right? So part of what makes uh, PRS guitar um, into a stable instrument is the amount of time that we take in the process of building the instrument. So you can't really just get a neck blank, start hacking away on it, and have a guitar that's going to stay in tune, remain in intonation, and be not needing truss rod adjustments every five or ten minutes. You know, you go too fast and you just have an unstable platform to build on. So we, we take a significant amount of time of making sure that we kind of nurse the, uh, the wood through the process and are building an instrument that you're not going to have to put a ton of time in um, on a daily or weekly basis to keep it in tune and, and uh, adjust it correctly. We put our neck blanks and our fretboards in our drying rooms. Um, we're shooting to get the moisture content so low that actually when we bring them back into this area of the shop, they'll suck a little bit of moisture back into them so we get them extraordinarily dry in our dry room bring them into this room, which is part of our factory, and, and that will actually, the moisture content will come up a little bit. We put them on a rack here, and you can see we have um, predominantly mahogany, but some maple neck blanks as well. They have dates on them, and we got first in, first out here, so when we bring um, neck blanks and mill them from the hot room, they have a date associated with them. We let them sit on these racks for a significant amount of time before we ever start the process. That gets them acclimated to the moisture and the temperature that's in this room as opposed to the moisture and, and temperature that was in our drying Okay, from here, the fun really begins. We take about three days to build a guitar body. Pretty fast, pretty simple operation of pulling um, dry wood out of the hot rooms, building a top, laminating it to a back, and then machining the body and then sanding the body. It's pretty fast, three days, four days on the outside to get that done. When we're making a neck, it's a very, very different situation. So from this position where we have neck blank, if you look over here, this is our factory floor. Going around this um, manufacturing space to get to the other side of the room, you're looking at about one month of time. So four days to build a guitar body, it could be around a month to build a neck. So some of the things that we're doing is we're trying to relieve um, tensile strength as we go through the machine process. We're exposing grain to the ambient air that it hasn't seen in maybe a hundred years. But the, the platform of the philosophy of what we're doing is we're making a small cut on a piece of wood, we're letting the neck sit for a day or an hour, whatever the requirement is, we're letting it move. We're not locking it into place, we're letting it float, and then we'll resurface it on the fretboard. So on the player surface, we'll just over and over again repeat that process. We'll machine it, we let it move, then we resurface the player surface. By the time we're through with this process, and we're from the beginning to the end, and about a month has taken place, this thing has moved 30, 40, 50 times. All the moving that happens on this guitar neck, we want it to happen inside of this shop. We never want it to happen once a customer has a guitar or even when it's in a guitar store. All the movement happens in here, we address it, it becomes stable, then we got a good instrument to build on. Um, the other thing that I'd like to point out is the, the tensile strength that comes into play with the necks. Each, each guitar, obviously, the wood is, has grain lines in it. Those grain lines represent some amount of tensile strength. When you cut into those grain lines, it actually it relieves the stress on the neck and just like stays on a mast. If you have a mast and two stays on it and you cut one of your stays, the mast is going to move. And the neck's going to move as well. Same thing, you cut green, you're cutting some of those stiffeners, it will move when you make your cuts. We allow all that to happen and again, we just keep on leveling that player surface. And after about a month, we're done. we got a guitar done. It's been my experience that the best sounding necks have been made of one piece. All PRS guitars are made with this construction. These neck blanks go through a special drying process. The goal of this whole drying process is to have a neck that will be straight for a lifetime. To demonstrate how strong this neck wood is, watch one of our employees try to break one.